Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Well, praise the Lord. Come on, give the Lord some glory in this place. Do you really believe he's your everything? Hallelujah. Man, it's been a long time since we've gotten together with God of Deliverance. We ought to be grateful. Over two and a half years, somebody ought to praise the Lord like you know he's your everything. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. The Bible said, Behold how good and plenty for brethren to dwell together in unity. We're united with you all on today to celebrate. Amen. To celebrate the goodness of God, the grace of God in the lives of this wonderful couple. In the person of Pastor Janice Anderson. Let's honor this woman of God. Amen. Come on, let's give it up. Let's give it up for. Her. Let's honor her. And in the person of none other than Apostle Kenneth Anderson. Hallelujah. Amen. And on behalf of my lovely wife, Reese and Newness of Life Christian Center. Amen. We are so grateful to be here. Amen. Uh, the, the saints know how I feel about being at home on Sunday morning, but for this great, great couple, we, we sacrifice. There are, there are, there are, Everybody at Newness of Life knows how dear he is to me and his wonderful wife. Amen. And I'm so glad to be here with one of the greatest churches in the world, God of Deliverance. <laughs> Along with another great, great church, Newness of Life Christian Center. Amen. Hallelujah. And so we're grateful. We're grateful. We're grateful. Amen. We're grateful. Amen. The praise and worship was wonderful, and we salute, salute you all for glorifying God. That takes you back. When I first got saved, amen, I went to a local assembly where we didn't have any drums, organ, or nothing. All we had was our hands, and one of the mothers had a scrub board. But we knew how to glorify God. <laughs> we knew how to glorify and magnify the Lord. And so I thank God for the praise and worship team who glorified God with their voices and lifted up the Lord. And it was wonderful. I love that song, Amen, that you all sung. Amen. Chasing after you and God is my everything. Is he your everything? Amen. Well, let's have a word of prayer, and we're going to go straight into this word, and let's see what God has to say. Father, you are good, and your mercy endureth forever. We thank you for your amazing grace, your amazing love. And more importantly, Father, we ask you right now to open up our eyes that we may see and behold the wondrous things in your law. Great peace have they which love thy law. You said nothing shall offend them. Thank you, Father, for thinking through my mind, speaking through my lips, revelation knowledge, and causing your people to arise to new levels. Glorify you now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank God for my lovely wife, Reese and Esther. Amen. And she's like apostle, probably busy doing something around here amen, taking care of something, but we thank God for her and all of you. I want you to do me a favor real quickly. I just need you, amen, to welcome the people that are watching by Facebook as well as by YouTube or, amen, whatever the platform they may be watching this program on. Let's give them a hand clap. Thank God for all of you. Those of you that have your Bibles, I want you to get your Bibles out, raise it up, put it in the devil's face like you hate him. 
like you understand that through and by the word of God you're going to win. And say these words, say, this is my Bible. I believe I am who this book tells me that I am. And I thank God that today my life shall change. I'll never, ever be the same. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. <clears throat> We're asking those of you that have your Bible to go to the book of Proverbs. We're going to go to many, many scriptures this morning, so I hope you're ready to look at scripture. The entrance of God's word, it giveth light and it gives understanding to the simple. And so we're going to look at Proverbs 12 and verse 8. Proverbs 12 and verse 8. And <clears throat> when you get there, say, I got it. Okay, Proverbs 12 and verse 8 says, A man shall be commended according to his wisdom, but he that is of a perverse heart shall be despised. A man shall be commended according to his wisdom, but he that is of a perverse heart shall be despised. I want to talk to you, and I'm going to give you many more scriptures on this. We're going to talk to you off a subject today entitled, The Great Exchange. The Great Exchange. And as a subtitle, we're going to talk about exchanging money for wisdom, okay? The great exchange, exchanging money for wisdom, okay? In this particular verse, the word for wisdom used is the Hebrew masculine noun, sekel, S-E-K-E-L, or sekel, which means intelligence, success, Discretion, knowledge, policy, prudence, understanding, cunning, and good sense. It is from the Hebrew verb sakal, S-A-K-A-L, or sakal, which means intelligent, consider, expert, instruct, prosper, skill, to have good success, to teach, or to make to understand, to guide wittingly, and it means to have insight and to have comprehension. So when I talk about wisdom, I'm talking about comprehension, I'm talking about insight, I'm talking about someone who's able to guide us wittingly, one who has skill, an expert. In fact, Proverbs 12 and 8 in the Amplified Classic says this. A man shall be commended according to his wisdom, godly wisdom, which is comprehensive insight into the ways and the purposes of God. But he who is of a perverse heart shall be despised. So when we're, not, when, we're, when we're talking here with you today, we're talking about this great exchange and honoring this man and woman of God for their wisdom, their godly wisdom, their comprehensive insight, their skill, their expertise in the things of God. They've been doing this for 28 years, and we're here to celebrate the wisdom of them both. Can you say amen? Proverbs 12 and 8 says in the ICB, a wise person is praised, but a stupid person is not respected. You and I are here again making this exchange, giving your leader on this day as we celebrate them, we're giving them money or the natural things for his wisdom or his spiritual, or their spiritual things. In 1 Corinthians 9, verses 7 through 11, and verses 13 and 14, listen at what it says. Who goeth a warfare any time at his own charges? Who planted a vineyard and eateth not the fruit thereof? Or who feedeth a flock and eateth not of the milk of the flock? 
Say I these things as a man, or saith not the law the same also? For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treaded out the corn. Doth God take care of for oxen? Verse 10, or saith he it altogether for our sakes? For our sakes, no doubt, this is written, that he that ploweth should plow in hope, and that he that thresheth in hope should be partaker of his hope. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? Notice verse 11. For if we have sown unto you your you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? Verse 13. Do you not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple, and they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar? Verse 14, even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. This is very important for the church to get a hold of because we're honoring them for giving you and I spiritual things. We're bringing carnal things. Money is an earthly thing. Amen? Paul here expounds on Deuteronomy 25 and 4, which said, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox which treaded out the corn. He explains to this Corinthian people that God has uttered this voice, not because he cares for a natural ox, but God spoke this verse so that those of us who have preached the gospel would be able to plow in hope. That those of us who preach the gospel would understand that for us laboring in the word of God, that people will appreciate the wisdom and the impartation of skill and expertise that we're bringing to them, that they will be willing to sow their earthly things. Hallelujah. In Galatians 6 and 6 in the Amplified Classic, let's go there. Galatians 6 and 6 in the Amplified Classic. It says, let him who receives instruction in the word of God share all things with his teacher, contributing to his support. So we see again that God is talking about how that we as men and women of God are proclaiming the gospel, then those who hear the gospel, receive from the gospel, should be willing to give their financial support and say thank you for giving us the wisdom that we need to make it. Can you say amen? amen. Don't worry. We're going to get stirred in a minute. We want to set this groundwork. 1 Kings chapter 10, verses 22 through 25. Notice we know a man by the name of Solomon when God appeared to him and asked him for whatever he wanted, God would grant his request. And we know what Solomon asked for. He asked for a what? A wise and an understanding heart that he could lead and guide God's people. And Solomon gave a request that pleased God. It pleased God because God said to him, because you didn't ask for riches, you didn't ask for wealth, you didn't ask for long life, you didn't ask for the life of your enemies, you asked for wisdom he said, I'm going to give you riches. I'm going to give you this. I'm going to give you all of that, amen, but I'm going to give you the main thing that I wanted you to ask for and you asked for it, which is wisdom and understanding. And the Bible said in 1 Kings chapter 10, verses 22 through 25, for the king had at sea a navy of Tharshish with the navy of Haram once in three years. Look, once in three years came the navy of Thoshes bringing gold, silver, ivory, apes, and peacocks. So King Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth for his riches and for wisdom. Look at verse 24 now. Pay attention. All and all the earth sought to Solomon to hear his wisdom, which he had put in his heart. And they brought every man his present. Vessels of silver, vessels of gold, and garments, and armor, and spices, horses, and mules, a rate year by year. So these people are bringing Solomon, who's the king, they're bringing him, not wisdom, they're bringing him gold, and silver, apes, peacock. They're bringing him the natural, but he's giving out wisdom. Please.
please know that what you are giving your leader is not even to be compared to what your leader or your leaders are giving you. Please know that there is a big difference between wisdom and money. And that wisdom, we're going to show you in the text and in other scriptures, where wisdom is better and to be more desired than money. All right? Ben Franklin said this, an investment in knowledge always pays the best interest. Say this, an investment in knowledge always pays the best interest. Hallelujah. Notice, when you go to college, what you're doing? You are paying for getting wisdom. You're investing in knowledge. We're here in the house of God and the things of God. We are investing, celebrating them for doing this for 28 years. And we should be willing to give a whole lot to him because he's given you a lot of wisdom in those years. Listen at this. The culture, the culture. I want to say this strongly. I want you to listen at me carefully. The culture and the world around us has duped us into thinking that money is more important than wisdom. Let me say that again. The culture and the world around us, your friends, your Uncle Fred and that cousin Bob of yours, have made you get duped into thinking that you're giving the church all your money, you're giving that preach all your money, and making you think that money is more valuable than wisdom. We, the church, should know better. Let me say that again. We, the called out group, we who study the word, we should know that money doesn't even compare to wisdom. See, I didn't get many claps on that because you being duped by people around you. The reason why that person inside you got all them problems is because they don't have the wisdom of God. And the reason why they don't have the wisdom of God is because they keep valuing money more than wisdom. But if they will value wisdom more than money, they'll be a victor in a, instead of a victim and they'll overcome every situation. Look at Proverbs 3. It ain't true because I said true because the Bible says it. Proverbs 3, 13 through 18. Listen at this. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. Why come? For the merchandise of it, wisdom, is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof than fine gold. Look at verse 15. She is more precious than rubies. Look at it. And all the things that thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Your car is not to be compared to wisdom. I'd rather have wisdom than a car. Oh, y'all didn't get that, did you? Uh -huh. All the things that I'd rather have wisdom than a house. Because if I have wisdom, I get the house. I have wisdom, I get the car. All the things that thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Length of days is in her right hand. And in her left hand, riches and honor. So she's holding long life and she's holding money. Her ways are, pleas are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life. Talking about wisdom. To them that lay hold upon her. And happy is everyone that retaineth her. Okay, you might then get it from that scripture. Let's go to Proverbs 8. Proverbs 8, verses 10 and 11. Let's see it again. By the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be what? Established. Look at Proverbs 8, verses 10 through 11. It said, receive my instruction and not silver and knowledge rather than choice gold for wisdom. It's better. Y'all didn't get it. It said wisdom is better. Something is better, meaning that, hey, this is in a higher level than what I'm talking about. 
So whenever you're making a shame, people say, oh, I got to give my pastor money his these anniversary. You ought to be glad this man giving you wisdom. He giving you something better than your money. But we've been duped by culture and a world around us that makes us think that money is better than wisdom. But wisdom will hold your marriage together. <laughs> oh, they out there in Hollywood, they got money, but they breaking up left and right. For they don't have wisdom. Wisdom is better than rubies. And all the things, listen at this, all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. All, everything, some people, they, all they desire is the natural stuff. They're not desiring wisdom. Because if you desire wisdom, you will come to the house of God. You give that wisdom, you will listen at your man of God. If you desire wisdom, you'll receive what that instruction that's coming out of your man or woman of God's mouth and value that more than money. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at Job 28. Job 28 verses 12 through 18 says, But where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Man knoweth not the price thereof. See, man don't know the value of it. And you're around people on your job who don't know the value of wisdom. You're around people in your community, got them unsaved friends, them unsaved loved ones who don't even know how precious wisdom is. Man knoweth not the price thereof, neither is it found in the land of the living. The depth said, it is not in me. The sea said, it is not in me. Notice verse 15. It cannot be gotten for gold, neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof. It cannot be valued with the gold of Ophir, with the precious ants or the sapphire. The gold, listen at this, and the crystal cannot equal it. And the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold. No mention shall be made of coral or of pearls. For the price of wisdom is above rubies. Think about how God sees wisdom so important that God took this man off a job at the post office making good money with good insurance and pulls him off and says, get in my face and give my people the word and feed the flock that I've given you oversight of because wisdom is better for them than all the money. Tell your neighbor wisdom is better than money. Yeah, this is a great exchange here that God said, wait a minute, you're going to sow to them. You ought to be glad that these anniversaries or times of celebration come because it gives you a chance to show how much you value wisdom. Look at Ecclesiastes 7, verses 11 and 12 says, wisdom is good with an inheritance, and by it there is profit to them that see the sun. Why come? For wisdom is a defense. And money is a defense. Both are defenses. Wisdom is a defense. Money is a defense. But watch. But the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. The difference is wisdom will give you life. Okay, let me read it to you in the International Children's Bible. It said this. Let's go to it. I, I like that sometimes because they break it down. You can't understand like that. Then you really mean. <laughs> Wisdom is as good to, having as, to have as inheriting property. It helps people see what to do. It helps you see what to do. <laughs> wisdom is like money. They both help a person. But wisdom... Is better than money. Oh, I wish I had somebody that would say that. I wish I had somebody that would open up your mouth and say wisdom is better than money. Why come? Why come? 
because it can save a person's life. Oh, come on. It brought you out of the club, didn't it? It brought you out of a dangerous situation, hasn't it? You'll still be on dope right now if it won't for somebody feeding you some wisdom. Letting you know that you don't need to throw your life away drinking. You don't need to throw your life away cussing. You don't need to throw your life away in that club shaking your behind. But you needed Jesus Christ to liberate you and set you free. Wisdom is better than money. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody open your mouth and give God some praise. And look at somebody and say, I'm glad I got wisdom. I'm glad I got wisdom. That's why I'm in the house of God on Sunday morning. I got wisdom. That's why I won't in the club last night. I got wisdom. That's why I ain't got a bottle tilted up to my mouth. Because I got wisdom. That's why I'm not smoking. Because I got wisdom. Mm. Tell somebody it's better, it's better, it's better. It's better, it's better. It's better. Thank God for your man of God that stands behind this pulpit every Sunday morning giving you something better than money, giving you something better than a house, giving you something better than a car, giving you something better than a new watch, giving you something better than a ring. He's giving you wisdom so you can stand. The Bible says, walk in wisdom toward them that are without redeeming the time for the days are evil somebody shout yeah somebody shout yeah I got wisdom you got wisdom thank God for wisdom you can be seated you can you can be seated you can be seated 28 years Pouring out wisdom. 28 years in a Bible class. Pouring out wisdom. Sunday morning. Pouring out wisdom. And you ought to be saying, Pastor, I'm going to give you some big money. Because you've been giving me something that kept my mind. You've been giving me something that held my marriage together. You've been giving me something that kept me from being a fool like I used to be. My life would be messed up if I hadn't heard the wisdom of God. You better thank God for your man of God. You better thank God for your woman of God that's giving you wisdom. I kept you out of the jailhouse. Some of us would have been locked up. Had a criminal record by now. But thank God that you came out of the world system because you heard the word. Because the word is our wisdom. Deuteronomy 4 and 6 tells you that. Listen at this. I got to move on. Yeah, we must humble ourselves to get God's wisdom. See, proud folk don't get God's wisdom. Folk that think they know it all don't get God's wisdom. But when you're humble, you will get the wisdom of God. Look at Proverbs 11 and 2. Look at Proverbs 11 and 2. It says, when pride cometh, then cometh shame. But with the lowly is wisdom. Humble people get wisdom. Because they're ready to push aside what they think and grab a hold of what God thinks. They're willing to push aside how they see it and grab how God see it. Because God said, my ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. So the wisdom of God is for the humble, for the lowly. Now look at this. I'm going to give you three quick little things here. Number one. Foolish people or fools care little or nothing about wisdom. Foolish people or fools care little or nothing about wisdom. Look at that person and say, I hope I'm not sitting beside a fool. 
I really do. See, and I got, I got, Pastor, I can't come to church. I gotta, I gotta make me some money. I gotta wash some cars today. I gotta do this today. You gonna let all that wisdom be lost? Fools care little or nothing about wisdom. It ain't true because I said, because the Bible said it. Proverbs 1 and 7. Look at Proverbs 1 and 7. Proverbs 1 and 7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and knowledge. They despise wisdom and knowledge. The word despise is from the Hebrew word booze. B-U-W-Z. Somebody say booze which means to disrespect, to hold in contempt, and to hold as insignificant. They look at wisdom as insignificant. All y'all doing is going to that church every Saturday. They don't know we're going here getting some wisdom so we won't make a fool out of ourselves and let the devil use us like he used to use us. Now I'm going to let God use me for his glory. For his praise. Somebody shout hallelujah in here. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm so glad that I'm no longer the devil's fool. I'm going to let God use me. God get the glory out of my life. God get the honor out of my life. God be magnified. Be glorified. I come to lift him up. I come to praise him for two and a half years. The man of God been pouring out wisdom on Facebook. Pouring out wisdom. Hallelujah. Proverbs 17 and 16. Proverbs 17 and 16 says, Wherefore is there a price in the hand of a fool to get wisdom? Seeing he has no heart to it. See, he ain't gonna get no man of God nothing for wisdom. Because he don't care nothing about it. Passage your anniversary. I got two dollars. Be blessed. She don't care nothing about it. But you would go and pay a three hundred or four or five hundred dollar month car payment. But you don't want to give your man of God nothing, and it's once a year. See, you don't value wisdom. When you value wisdom, what price is too great? Hmm. Oh. Say no price in the hand of a fool for no wisdom. I remember I worked at CDC years ago, and a man was there. He said, here, Rev, take this and put it in your chair. Like you're going to really get out some bread and water. Like you're going to really do it. And CDC was paying good man in one of the good paying plants around here. Good. He grabbed out $2 and said, put that in the offering. <laughs> I looked at him. I said, man, you got to be kidding me. No, no, see, fools have no delight in wisdom. The man I'm talking about right now, in the grave, in hell, he lifting up his eyes. Dead as a donor, drank himself to death. Died living like a fool because he didn't value. He didn't value. Tell your neighbor, you better place a high value on wisdom. This is a great exchange. We're here celebrating this man. Different pastors and preachers are going to come here and, and honor him and honor her for having wisdom. We honor you for your wisdom. Not for your dancing, but for your wisdom. Look at this thing. Proverbs 23 and 9. Proverbs 23 and 9. Speak not in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of your word. He sees them as insignificant. He pays them no mind. He said, don't even waste your time talking to a fool because he would despise all the wisdom you're trying to give him. Ben Franklin said this, being ignorant is not so much a shame as being unwilling to learn. See, when you came in, remember, you were ignorant. I came in the house of God, I was just as ignorant, didn't know nothing, didn't know how to find no book in the Bible. Didn't know the book of Hosea, Jeremiah, where that at? 
We were ignorant. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about, newness of life. I can speak about them. I know they were ignorant, didn't know nothing. <laughs> ignorant just means you just haven't been taught, you just didn't know. But it's bad when you are unwilling to learn. Let somebody teach you. Sit at the feet of somebody. Proverbs 15 and 2 in the Passion Translation. Proverbs 15 and 2 in the Passion Translation says, When wisdom speaks, understanding becomes attractive. But the words of the fool will make their ignorance look laughable. Listen at Proverbs 10 and 8 in the Message Bible. Proverbs 10 and 8 in the Message Bible. Just hang with me. A wise heart takes orders. An empty head will become unglued. A wise heart will take orders. The main thing, you listen, man of God, preach that word so I can get some instructions here, some orders here, because I'm ready to abide by this wisdom that I'm hearing so my life can go to another level. Look at Proverbs 24 and 7. I want everybody to read this one. Proverbs 24 and 7. Everybody look at it on the screen or look at it in your Bible, and let's read it together. Wisdom is too high for food. He opened not his mouth in the gate. Wisdom is what? It's too high for a fool. What was the point I brought out? That foolish people or fools care little or nothing about wisdom. Number two, those who get or go after wisdom love themselves. Point yourself, I love me. Yeah, yeah, you're going to love your neighbor as you do yourself. And I can tell whether you love yourself if you, if you love wisdom. Because wisdom will get you somewhere in life. Look at it. This, I'm going to give you this quote by me. I gave you this quote. I'm going to you to write this down. Those who don't place high value on wisdom place little or no value on themselves. Those who don't place high value on wisdom place little or no value on themselves. People will go to their job with a little cold and cold. <laughs> but they go in that job. <coughs> I gotta get to work. <laughs> they get a little, little, little cold and cold. They ain't got, I ain't talking about the pandemic now. I ain't talking about you got COVID. But I'm talking about a little cold. <laughs> Pastor, I can't, can't come today. <laughs> I don't feel good. My, my stomach, stomach's growling in it this morning. I read, yeah, that greasy bacon you ate and all that other stuff. See, we make excuses for not getting to where wisdom is. Which means you place little value on you. I value wisdom because wisdom is going to help me get somewhere I could not without it. And I value Van Sharp. Love your neighbor as yourself. You got to love you. And love me the way you love you. But there are a lot of people that don't love them. If you don't go to Bible study or listen to that on Facebook, I know you don't love you. You don't love you because you need wisdom. Oh, sleepy. Well, you set your alarm the same way you do to get up. Make sure you don't miss that word. Make sure you don't miss what's coming out of your man of God's mouth. Because why? You love you. And you know the devil's always trying to make you do something stupid with your life. And the only way to defeat him is through the wisdom of God. He's always trying to make us do something stupid. Always trying to make us do something crazy. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the devil wants you to do something stupid with your life. Anybody ever done something stupid with your life? I've done some stupid stuff. Because the devil wanted me to do some stupid stuff with my life. But thank God for the word of God. Thank God for the wisdom of God that has kept me, that has guarded me, that has protected me. The third thing, those who desire wisdom, those who desire to build a, rather, a great life or a house value wisdom. How many of y'all want to build a great life? Huh? If you want to build a great life, if you want to build an extraordinary life, if you want to see supernatural blessings and everything else, you got to value wisdom. Wisdom will help you build your life. Look at Proverbs 24 and 3. 
it says, through wisdom is a house built, and by understanding it is established. What builds the house? What builds a life? Wisdom. Wisdom, man. I don't mind giving you no money on this day for all the wisdom you've been putting out for 28 years. For all the stuff you have helped people not enter into that Satan wanted them to enter into. Name of the church is God of deliverance. Think about how many times you've been delivered from the snare of the fowler because of this man and woman of God's wisdom. Hallelujah! He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. It helps you cut off bad relationships. Oh, I'm into something now. I'm all in. All right, let me, I, I got ahead of myself. L listen, listen. I'm going to give you eight things your leader's wisdom affects. Eight things about you. Eight things, okay, and I'll be out of your way. It's been said the key to success in life is using the thoughts of wise men. What's the key to success in life? Is using the thoughts of wise men. The key to success in life is using the thoughts of wise men. That's why the devil don't want people to read their Bible and study the word. Because you're getting God's thoughts. Now, let's look at these eight things that your leader's wisdom affect. Number one, your attitude and your aptitude. Your leader's wisdom affects your attitude and your aptitude. Proverbs 3, 1, 2, and verse 13 says, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. Verse 2, for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to you. Happy, happy, that's an attitude, is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that get it understanding. Happy, happy, attitude. It's been said, you have more value in your attitude than you do in your bank account. Y'all didn't get what I just said. You have more value in your attitude than you do in your, your, your attitude is more powerful than your bank account. Because your attitude, a bad attitude can shut doors. A bad attitude can mess up everything. You need to have an attitude of obedience, an attitude of submission, an attitude of faith, an attitude of love, an attitude of hope, and an attitude of gratitude. Attitude affects so much. Attitude affects your commitment. If Satan can corrupt your attitude, he can erode your commitment. Say that with me. If Satan can affect your attitude, he can corrode your commitment. Yeah. What is your attitude? What is your attitude like? Listen at this. An attitude can be seen. An attitude can be heard. Yeah, you can hear people that got an attitude. You can listen at them. Talk. She got an attitude. She didn't, she talking all rough. She got an attitude. It can be seen. Some people you see the attitude coming. Whoa, don't like she got a good attitude today. Whoa. Somebody ought to thank God for the man so we won't see that attitude coming. Because <laughs> attitude can be seen. An attitude can be Heard, an attitude can be felt. You can walk in a room and feel, oh man, the attitude. Somebody mad in here. <laughs> Somebody up, let me get out of there. You can feel the spirit ain't even right in hell. Somebody mad. Amen. It can be felt, and watch this one, an attitude is contagious. It's contagious. It's like this pandemic. A bad attitude can jump on you, man, if you don't have an immune system. <laughs> a good immune system with the word of God to keep that bad attitude off you. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I came in here with the right attitude because I got wisdom. Wisdom. See, wisdom affects your attitude. Happy, 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 happy. Pastor Sharp, why do you stay in the word so much? Because I'm trying to keep my attitude right. 
I don't want to walk out here and be, have a bad temper and be mean toward people. I want my attitude right. right. And it affects attitude and aptitude. Your aptitude. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 13 through 15. It says, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able. What are the Holy Scriptures able to do, y'all? To make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. We got up out in the bed this morning. Why? To get wisdom. Why? Because it's going to affect our attitude and our aptitude. It's going to make you wise to the things that belong to salvation. Number two, eight things that your pastor, these great leaders here, have done through giving you this wisdom. It affects your mouth. Your mouth. When you get wisdom, wisdom affects your mouth. You don't talk about what other folks talk about. You don't engage in every conversation that comes about you. Can you say amen? Look at Proverbs 10 and 31. It said, the mouth of the just bringeth forth what? Wisdom. But the froward tongue shall be cut out. Proverbs 13 and 3. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. But he that opened wide his lips shall have destructions. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, my mouth has been changed by listening at Apostle Anderson. Amen. Or whoever your pastor is. Your mouth. If we don't help change your mouth, change what you love talking about. Change what you love engaging a conversation in. You on that job and everywhere you go, you are walking in the wisdom of God. When you hear the wrong conversation, you walk away. When you hear the wrong conversation, you say, we ain't got no business talking about that. You say, come on, let's pray for this person. Have you heard, girl? Have you heard about so-and-so? They went through a divorce. You heard about so-and-so? Let's pray about it. You ain't got to try to find out all the details because that ain't wisdom. Wisdom helps your mouth. Uh-huh, some of us used to curse, had that bad mouth. But look at you now. You're talking about hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Wisdom has affected your mouth. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you get wisdom in you, you won't use that vulgar language. Number three, your actions. Your actions have been affected by the wisdom of God. Look at Proverbs 16 and 3. When a man's ways please the Lord, he make even his enemies to be at peace with him. When a man's ways, his actions, your actions have been affected by this man of God and woman of God's wisdom. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17 in the Passion Translation says, God has transmitted his very substance into every scripture. For it is God breathed. It will empower you by its instruction and correction, giving you the strength to take the right direction and lead you deeper into the path of godliness. Then you will be God's servant, fully mature, and perfectly prepared to fulfill any assignment God gives you. So wisdom affects your ways. It affects your actions. Look at your neighbor and say, I don't act the way I used to act. Because of God's wisdom. Uh-huh, I know how to act. I know how to behave now. Oh, I, 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 don't, I don't snap at folks like I used to. Oh, no, I don't go off on my husband. I don't go off on my wife. I don't give people a piece of my mind because I got wisdom now. I know that it's better to walk in wisdom than to act a fool. Mm -hmm. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. Wisdom affects my actions. Yeah, you know they say, oh, they knew that. They said, the places I used to go, I don't go no more. The things I used to do, I don't do no more. A change has taken place because of the word of God. Number four, what else? Your associations. Yeah, because of listening at this man of God, look how many people have now entered into your life that's been healthy, and look how many have went out of your life that's been unhealthy. 
1 Corinthians 15 and 33. Y'all know 1 Corinthians 15 and 33 says, be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. In the Amplified Classic, listen to what it says in the Amplified Classic. Do not be so deceived and misled. Evil companionships, communion associations, corrupt and deprave good manners and morals and character. So, as a result of listening to this man for 28 years, some of you have been here 12 or 10 or whatever, his wisdom has affected your association. When I heard my pastor, I heard him teach that word, I had to cut off them little girlfriends. I was 19 years old when I got saved. But I heard the word of God. And it, wisdom will let me know, you got to stop that. You can't associate with that no more. Oh, y'all don't want to talk to me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now you got to wait on a wife. Come on, somebody. He that find a wife, find a good thing and obtain favor of the Lord. That word cut off bad associations. The word, the wisdom. Number five, what else it affects? His wisdom, if you've been paying attention to it, is affecting your money. You're supposed to be listening at wisdom in here, and your money status should change. You shouldn't be getting broker here. I tell people, news like they know I've been passing for doing this for many, many years now. I tell people it don't matter whether you got a car, rent a bicycle, whatever. We're going to help change your financial state. The word of God changes your pocketbook. Called the reason why you were broke because you were a fool with money. Oh, y'all there? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, Lord. Yeah, yeah. If you listen at your man of God, your pocketbook should go to another level. Because he's going to teach you how to tithe, teach you how to sow. That's what I said. He's going to teach you how to tithe. I ain't taking it back. Tithing is still God's will for God's people. And I'll do a teaching on that later on. But look at this. Look, it's been said, watch this, poor thinking habits keeps most people poor. They thinking poor. And when you hear this man of God, you're going to think rich. Because he's going to teach you that you're an heir of God. And you're a joint heir with Christ. He's going to teach you that you are the seed of Abraham. For if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and you're heirs according to the promise. He's going to teach you about who you are. You're not a grasshopper. You're a giant killer. Y'all didn't hear what I said. I said, you're not a grasshopper. You're not a nobody trying to tell somebody about, uh, about everybody, about somebody who can save anybody. That ain't you. You are peculiar people. You are chosen generation. And it's going to raise the way you think. And when you raise the way a person think, their money going to change. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I love God. And I love the man of God. I love the woman of God. Because it changed my money. You cannot stay in here. And listen at this man of God like you're supposed to and adhere to what he's teaching you and stay broke. You can't do it. You cannot do it. Look at 2 Chronicles 20 and 20. 2 Chronicles 20 and 20. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. If you believe the prophets, Believe what we're saying as men and women of God, you're going to prosper. Third John verse 2, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul, your will, your mind, your emotions, your intellect begins to prosper. It is not good that the soul be without knowledge. My people are destroyed for a lack of They've gone into captivity because of what? They have no knowledge. 
Isaiah 5, 13. Anyway, prosperous is the Hebrew word tesalic, T-S-A-L-A-C-H. It is the verb from a primitive root, which means to push forward. When you listen at this man of God, you're going to push forward. When you listen at this man of God, it also means to break out. Oh, look at your neighbor. So I'm going to have a breakout in my pocketbook. No, yeah, I'm going to have a breakout in my finances. I'm going to have a breakout in my bank account. I'm going to have a breakout. That devil ain't going to hold my money back. That devil ain't going to hold my increase back because the Lord shall increase us more and more, us and our children. The longer I stay alive, the better I'm going to be. The more I stay alive, the more I'm going to push forward. I have a breakout in the name of the Lord because I'm hearing wisdom come out of the man of God. Look at your neighbor and say, get ready for your breakout. Break out of poverty. Break out of owing everybody. Break out of being the borrower and start being the lender. You're going to have a breakout. It means to go over. It means to go over. This Hebrew word means to go over. It means to be good. It means to meet. It means to be profitable. Watch this. It means to advance, to make progress. It means to succeed or to bring to successfulness. Now, why you say this man of God going to affect my money? Because the book of Philippians tells you that when you give to him, my God. Look at it. All right, Philippians 4, 15 through 19. Y'all indulge me a little bit. Now, ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but you only. For even in Thessalonica, you sent once and again. What did they do? Sent once and again unto my necessity. Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. Oh, I desire fruit. That's what gives me to happen when we bless this man of God. God is going to get fruit from us as we give to him that's going to go to our account. But I have all and abound. I'm, I, have, I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell. Who is our giving today going to be a sweet smell? A sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. No, he's not talking about giving to God here. He's talking about what they gave to him. It becomes a sacrifice that's well-pleasing to God. And then in verse 19, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Somebody say hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, the seed has authority over poverty. Yeah, your seed to this man of God, your seed to this woman of God has authority over poverty. It destroys poverty and causes plenty to be released. Your, it does. A seed to the church, a seed to your man of God. It destroys poverty and it causes plenty to be released. It causes kingdom prosperity. And kingdom prosperity is about taking the currency that the devil uses to corrupt and manipulate people and using it to bring morality and change to people's lives. Let me say that again. Kingdom prosperity is about, that's why the devil don't like for us, the church, to talk about money or to even get, start getting, right, we, we, I believe right now we're on the cusp of the church having the biggest financial breakthrough we ever had. Because the devil trying to stir up something to keep us from tithing and giving because I'm telling you, we're on the cusp of, oh my God, of a kingdom breakout. Oh, yeah. Kingdom prosperity is about taking the currency that the devil uses to corrupt and manipulate people and using it to bring morality and change to people's lives. Kingdom prosperity is a prosperity that lifts us into a place that 
our own or your own human efforts can't take us. It is not a prosperity that makes us put money first, nor is it a prosperity that causes us to be high-minded. But it is a prosperity that helps us or causes us to advance others as well as endorse kingdom projects. The prosperity that God planned on bringing you ain't so you can be high-minded. It's so you can have it and still be humble. Be blessed and still be humble. Be successful and still be humble. Be successful and still speak to people. Be successful, get out of your Mercedes or your Cadillac or whatever kind of nice car you got and still know how to act. You know if it had not been for the Lord, you wouldn't have it. You give all glory to God. Kingdom prosperity. And I'm telling you, when you give to this man and woman of God, that's why the devil wants you to value money more than this wisdom. Because you value wisdom more than this money, you're going to get off that money and bless that man of God for giving you this wisdom. And I'm telling you, it's going to trigger kingdom prosperity. And kingdom prosperity is supernatural. You can't explain it. You will blow people's mind. How you get that? How you have that? said, man, God done it. Look at your neighbor and say, God, get ready to do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now all his works is finished from the beginning, but I'm saying there's a manifestation of what he's ordained for your life that's about to occur because you're going to be obedient. Number six, what does this giving to your man of God affect? Your energy. Your energy. If you don't give to your man of God, watch. You're going to come in here every Sunday drag. You can tell them people ain't giving. To the man of God, like, they drag, they drag him to church. <laughs> Come on, they ain't got no energy. The way these jobs working, some of y'all, you need supernatural energy. You gonna stay tired till you obey God. <laughs> what did I just say? It affects your energy. That's why you ain't got no energy to make love to your wife, no energy to have sex, no energy to do nothing. Just sleep. Too tired. Come on, work tired. Go to work tired. Come on, because you ain't doing what God told you to do. God said, when you honor my wisdom, I'll give you supernatural energy. Some of y'all married people, y'all better want some of this. You will come back to 19. They know what I tell them at church. I'm 19 again. My wife tell me all the time, I said, get on up, get on up, 19. I said, yes, sir, I'm 19. God not took me back. I know y'all don't believe it. This thing's supernatural. It's supernatural. It's not natural. My wife tell me, said, go out there. Said, I had my little grandbabies down here this week. This week, they were down there. They want to play basketball. I said, okay, we're going to the gym. They said, Papa, are we going to the gym? I said, yeah, I'm going to the gym. Oh, I said, do not get out there and try to play. I said, you don't got to get out there. Amen. Got out there, boy, I'm playing, man. We playing three on three. And, and man, I'm, they out there trying to shoot them, them, them other team trying to do it. I said, look at that. I'm grabbing rebound. Oh, putting it on them, boy. I'm putting it on them. I'm putting it on them. My, my grandson, he want to be on my team, you know, me and him. And, man, we won. We blew him out. I'm snatching rebound. This 19 come from wisdom. Wisdom will give you energy. So the next day they said, Papa, are we going again? Oh, I said, we're going to take him back. I said, yeah, we're going to the gym again. When I get through with them, guess what they're doing? They're like, oh. they going to sleep good tonight. Oh, y'all don't. All right, watch it. It ain't true because I say it. It's true because the word said. I'm going to prove it to you. Ecclesiastes 7, verses 11 and 12 in the Message Bible. Ecclesiastes 7, verses 11 and 12. Wisdom in the Message Bible. Wisdom is better when it's paired with money, especially if you get both while you're still alive. Tell your neighbor, I'm going to have both. I'm going to have wisdom and some money. Y'all didn't get it. Look, look what he said. Double protection. You got wisdom, that's protection. And you got money, that's double protection. Wisdom 
and wealth. That's the double protection. You got wisdom and you got wealth. Plus, here's the bonus. Wisdom does what, y'all? If you hear me right now, this word's supposed to be going in you, giving you some energy. You ought to go back home and say, baby, take your clothes off. It's time to make love. Now, what in the world now happened to him? She said, what? You not been to church? <laughs> High five somebody. Say, I hope you got some energy. Yeah, yeah. Where the energy at? Where the energy at? My little grandson, they come home, my wife tell you, hey amen, I get out there on the scooter, they got a scooter, I got a scooter for them, they out there riding the scooter, I said, come on, let's ride, Woo! I'm riding the scooter with them. They jumping all on my back. I grab my little granddaughter, she's, she's heading my wife, I said, you better not pick her. I said, I got her, I got her. She was asleep, and when you sleep, you know, that's dead weight. And somebody knocked out sleep. She knocked out sleep. And I got to move her around. I picked her on up. I said, you ain't, you know she had, I said, I got her, I got her. Now, I not played basketball with them. Now, I shot hoops with them. Now, I ran up, up and down that court with them. But I got my granddaughter. <laughs> energy. Look at your neighbor and say, energy comes with wisdom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You Stop telling people you old. You ain't old. Tell them life just started. Tell them it's just beginning. You got the wisdom of God. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, I got energy. You ought to go on that job Monday morning and say, hey! Y'all ready to work? My wife can tell you that's how I had to go to work at CDC. I go up there and say, come on, man. They said, Red, where you been this Sunday? I said, man, I've been in the house of God. I've been praising God. I said, it's time to do this job here today. They said, wait, what you talking about, man? You up there preaching like this, your poop. I said, come on, come on, bring these engines on down. Send them engines on down, sweet baby. Send them on down. Come on, let's roll, let's roll. I got wisdom. Wisdom energizes its owner with strength. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. Energy comes when I listen at my man and woman of God. You're supposed to come in here, you might be a little drained, but by the time this service is over, you ought to say, good grace almighty. David said, I'll run through a troop. I'll leap over walls. But wait, every time you talk to us, I'm tired. I'm tired. I go home because I'm tired. I can't go because I'm tired. Pastor, we got to go out of town to preach. I ain't going because I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm just tired. You gonna cook tonight? I'm tired. You gonna make love tonight? I'm tired. You better go to McDonald's, cause I'm tired. You better go to Burger King, cause I'm tired. Somebody shout hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, get your energy back. We've been listening at too much word. We've been spending time listening at the message. See, what we do, we're going to hear the word Sunday, and we don't hear none Monday, and don't hear none Tuesday, and then we, we out of energy. We drain. But when you listen at that word, that word will energize you. That word will keep your energy flow up. It's better than any vitamin. It's better than any mineral. Some of y'all just gobbling vitamins and gobbling minerals, but you ain't gobbling the word. Got seven minerals in you and still ain't got no energy. Got 12 vitamin C, vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin B plus, and still like it. But tell your neighbor I'm getting this word in me and my energy gonna come back. God will renew your youth like an eagle. He'll make you stronger. He'll cause you to do like Samson to grab a lion and snatch his mouth open and get the honey out of his mouth. God will do you like Elijah. Outrun the chariots. God will give you supernatural energy. Somebody shout hallelujah. I, 
after, after all that, after all that busy weekend, my daughter was working. So she couldn't come and pick him up from Greensboro. So that meant what? I had to drive him to Greensboro. Drove him to Greensboro, got to Greensboro. My daughter said, can't y'all stay a little while? We said, and watch him, watch him practice. He got practice. I got him there just in time for practice. So he got to practice. He said, Papa, can you see me practice? I watched him practice for an hour. Got through watching him practice for an hour. And my little bitty one, he's four years old. He wanted to come out there and hoop some more. Come on, Papa. So I got to show him some more hoop. Come on, come on then. I got this defense on you. He said, come on, Papa. And then I got a, a granddaughter. She wanted to play. So they playing two against one. They just throwing the ball over here, throwing the ball over there. And I'm running and ripping. And then the other one come, and he wanted to play. Now they three against one. I got to play all three of them. And then drive back from Greensboro two and a half hours and be safe. Where did this energy come from? Look at somebody say, you can ready to get your energy back. Yeah, yeah, come on. Tell them, look at them, look at them. And tell them this, because they need this word today. Tell them, say, you can ready to feel 17 again. Oh, yeah. 17 again. Bring back the youth in the church. Bring back the strength in the church. Bring back the energy in the church so we won't fall asleep while the preacher preaching. And then wake up at the end to my hallelujah. You not missed the whole message because you know you were asleep. You didn't have the energy. Mm. Look at three people said 17 again. 17 again. Which brings me to number seven. I got it. Jump up and jump up like you got it again. Say 17 again. Y'all better stop messing with me. Me and my wife will go home right now. 17 again. Hey! Ow! 17 again. Hey, look at somebody say, I got it back, I got it back, I got it back, I got it back, I got my energy back, I got my strength back. Okay, I got two more and I'm clothing, I'm clothing. Number seven, number seven is favor. Favor. The man of God is going to help you with favor. Somebody say favor. Look at your neighbor and act like you got something. Say, I got favor. That means doors get ready to open up. That means that somebody is getting ready to use their influence, their power, and their money to bless my life. I got favor. Luke 2 and 52 says, and Jesus increased. What he increasing, in, y'all? Uh-oh. And statue, and in what? Favor with God and man. So his wisdom brought him into more favor with God and man. Because you've been listening to Apostle Anderson, you get ready to have some favor that's getting ready. Look out. Look at your neighbor and say, Look out for favor. Say, Favor, get ready to follow you this week. You get ready to see favor. Favor on top of favor. God's getting ready to give you favor. God's getting ready to give you favor, sir. I see you going to another realm of favor. The Lord said, get ready to see an increase of favor because you even sacrificed today to be here these few moments. Hallelujah. God said, favor is your portion in Jesus' name. Somebody say hallelujah. Look at somebody say favor is your portion. Proverbs 14 and 35. Proverbs 14 and 35 says, what? Let, let's read it, y'all. Let's read it together. The king's is toward a what? But his wrath. The 
the king's favor. All you need is the king of kings to favor you. Now, now, if you don't believe you got it, don't get excited. But if you know you got favor, tell them, say, I got favor on my life. <laughs> Woo! Lie on me, talk about me, but I'm still going to be blessed because I got too much favor to go down. Favor! That's what helped Joseph out. Joseph was put in a trap by this woman. She accused him of rape, but God still blessed Joseph because Joseph had favor. He was put in prison and still was elevated there because Joseph had favor. God positioned him to be the man next to the head Pharaoh because Joseph had favor. He wore the Pharaoh's ring. He had authority because he had favor. God was with Joseph. The word Joseph means to add. God is adding favor to your life. And ain't nothing the devil can do about it because you're here today celebrating your man and woman of God. The last point is this. Eight things that what? Your leader's wisdom affects in your life. Y'all got them? Number one was what? Your attitude and aptitude. Number two was what? Your mouth. Number three was what? Your actions. That's right. That man of God has helped you with your actions, your attitude, your mouth. Oh, yeah. Some of y'all used to listen to that crazy music. You can't listen to that man be saved. No, no, no more Teddy Pendergrass. No more Marvin Gaye. Huh? No more Jay-Z and Beyonce. You're not against them. You just understand that music, you cannot have light and dark, and you cannot mix this stuff. You can't come in here and think your mind will be on Jesus after listening at that corrupt stuff. Oh, y'all mighty quiet. It affects your action. The music you said, just stop turning that music to that wrong stuff. Stop playing that wrong stuff on Facebook and YouTube and stuff. Sending them over to people. Letting them hear you as a Christian playing stuff that's ungodly and unworldly. Come on now. Stuff that, uh, I mean, that's worldly. Stuff that aroused your flesh. Hmm? Teddy Pendergrass aroused our flesh. Close the door. Turn off the lights. Oh, y'all ain't going to talk to me. You can't listen to that stuff. God told me when I got saved, say it's witchcraft. Burn it. I said, what? I was 19 years old. God said, take it and burn it. My mother had a big barrel out there in the backyard. God said, take it out there and set it on fire. It is witchcraft. I didn't even know the scripture was in the Bible where in the book of Acts, they burnt all those curious arts. They burnt it because it was witchcraft. And God told me it was bewitching my mind. And I turned on Shirley Caesar. And I turned on the Hawkins family. A change, a wonderful change has come over me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! All you need is the gospel. It's some gospel music. Speak to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody to the Lord. Huh? Huh? The wrong kind of music will move your feet the wrong way and make you gyrate the wrong way. Music is powerful. Because even after you leave the presence of that music, that song still stays in your head. Hallelujah. This past Sunday, my wife and I were singing that song uh, uh, by uh, Pr Pr she, uh, Hillier. Uh, yeah. What was it called? What was the name of it? Amen. Y'all forgot? Yeah, I'm expecting great things. And then they start singing this other one about... Uh, yeah, great Jehovah, you and we won't stop praising. Boy, I mean, all this past week, I was just singing, great Jehovah. So the, the service was over, but that song was still in my head. You're good and we won't stop praising. Oh, yeah, that's it. Great Jehovah, you're good and we won't stop praising. We won't stop praising. 
which brings me to my fifth, and I mean my eighth point, my eighth point. Uh, did I go to those other ones? What did I say? Your mouth, your action, your money, your uh, energy, your favor, and last one is this one that we close it out, your praise. Your praise. The man of God and the word of God and the wisdom of God should affect your praise. Yes, it does. Because of the watchman of this house, there should be a more radical and a determined praise. Our praise shouldn't remain shallow, but should be stronger than our trials, our tests, or outer circumstances. Our praise should be full of glory as we usher in the king of glory. Meaning what? The longer you stay here in God of deliverance, the more radical. Let me say that again. The more radical. When I was out in the world, the longer you stayed in the club, the crazier you act. Y'all didn't get what I said. Oh, yeah. You might go in there looking, grab a few. But after a while, you get that liquor in you. You get that wine and beer in you. You didn't care who you danced with. You just wanted to dance with somebody. Because the longer you stay in there, the crazier you get, the wilder you get. Uh-huh, because the more, more you forget about yourself and start focusing on, I'm here to party. Well, I believe that the longer we stay with God and the longer we've been involved with the things of God, the more radical our praise should be. Don't take my word for it. Let David talk to us. David brought up the ark of the covenant because David thought that the ark had a problem because the man had touched the ark and fell dead. David said, I don't want to have nothing to do with this. And he took it down there in Obed-Edom's house. But when he took it to Obed-Edom's house, the blessings came on Obed-Edom's house. And when David heard about all that and God began to tell him what had happened, that you brought the ark up wrong. You put it on a new cart and it was meant to be carried on the shoulders of a priest. And David went back down there and got that ark and brought that ark back to where it belonged. Praise belong in the house of God way more than in the club. And if you want a wallflower out there, how can you be one in here? The wisdom of God should tell you that God inhabits the praises of Israel. We are God's people and God is where praise is. And if we want God to really move and shift and turn stuff around he needs to get a radical praise from you I know you got on the mass but for two and a half years we ain't been able to get together like this how dare we come in here with our arm folded without a jumping and a leaping cause David said I was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the Lord. My praise belong to God. My hands belong to God. My feet belong to God. I came to give him glory and to say thank you that I didn't die during the pandemic. I didn't die. Look at somebody say you still here He deserved the praise You still here He deserved the honor You still here Celebrating your man And woman of God And the Bible said man of God That David Didn't just bring the ark of God back like this That ain't how 
how he brought that art back. Apostle, he didn't bring that art back like, we got the art back, y'all. Come on. The Bible said David was leaping, dancing. And his out of God falls all over. And he just keeps dancing and praising God. And his wife looks out at him. Said, David, you embarrassing me. Because a real praise ain't trying to look cute. A real praise ain't trying to look sophisticated. A real praise. Know that if it had not been. Now here's the key. She wants David to stop. But David said these words. Woman, you don't understand. I was a slave. Your daddy was in charge. Your brother was supposed to be in this place. And this is what he said, Apostle. I will be. I'm vile now. But I will be more vile than this. In other words, the longer I walk with God, the more praise he should get from me. Where are the radical praises that will praise God for his goodness? Oh, that men will praise the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I know God's been good to you. I believe after two and a half years of God of deliverance, not getting together with newness of life, we ought to be willing. Good God. Ow! Oh! Hallelujah! I wish I had some praises in the house. There you go. There go one of them. There go another one. I wish I had some praises. Woo. Come on. Give him praise. Give him praise. The great exchange, money for wisdom. The great exchange. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor. It's been two and a half years since we got together like this. I think we ought to praise the name of the Lord like we've lost them. Come on, give God a crazy praise. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Give him praise. Praise him in your bedroom. Praise him in your living room. Praise him right there in your kitchen. Give him glory.
out of him. In the modern day church, we sing songs about praise, but then everybody sit down like we were listening to entertainment. But the way we came from a long time ago, we didn't have no praise team, no praise leader. A person out of the audience would sing a song. I look like every song had that same little beat, that same key. And we would clap, and after we got through singing the song, everybody would praise him. Because we got praise and worship leaders and praise and worship songs, but we don't praise him. The song is to invite the king of glory in here so we can... Especially black folk. Black folk got a beat and a rhythm. And black people know how to dance. And some of y'all knew you would take the flow. So we ought to praise him. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Neighbor. I know you look good today. But just for 30 seconds, I just want you to praise God. For all his benefits, for all his blessings, for all the breakthroughs, God. Go ahead. Praise him in a dance. Praise him in a dance. was so important to God that that woman looked out and talked against it and God shut her womb and she was never able to have children because she spoke against the thing that God wanted most and David was giving God the thing he wants most. God wants some praise in this house. God wants some glory in this house. Thank you. Somebody say the great exchange. Money for wisdom. All right, all right, all right. Y'all got it? This is the great exchange today. We're going to give you money. You deserve money. Some carnal for what you've been given this house and the people of God. Spiritual. I never forget he came that newness of life, preached a message about sowing a game changing message to bless the house. You've given us spiritual things. Don't ever let anybody make you underestimate this assignment. And this call and what you're doing because you deserve this and much, much more. Ta 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 ba 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 kosha. And I prophesy with you and your wife that much, much more is coming. God gonna cause you, don't you dare die early. Don't you dare leave me back here fighting devils by myself. I ain't gonna give you no hug till you promise me that. You don't want to go home. Don't let the people get to you. Nothing else get to you. 
that you want out of here. Because wisdom is greater than money. Think about how many great generals have gone on. We don't need their money. We don't need their car. We don't need their house. We need their wisdom. Their wisdom. That's why you want to put it in somebody so that even when you're gone, the wisdom will still be here. All the money we can give him is less than what he's given you. If you give him a thousand dollars, what is that?